Hello and welcome to a new video about Prometic Controls. This time we want to do coordinated movement. We just do not want to use just one cylinder, we want to use more cylinders and they should move in a certain pattern. So usually we do use their valves, roller lever valves. So valves which can where the cylinder, if the cylinder is traveling and it reaches end position, it will operate the valve and the valve is doing a, giving a signal. Yeah? And also in the other direction, the valve is then touched by the cylinder if it's going inside. Here I have drawn an example of such pneumatic control. Yeah? And here we can see uh, there are these roller level position valves here. So this here is BG1, BG1 is here, the valve itself is here and this marks the position. Yeah? So this valve is located here and this is operated if the cylinder MM1 is in inside position. In outside position the cylinder MM1 would operate MPG2. BG2 is here. Yeah? And here at MM2 we have BG3 and BG4. And as we see at this drawing, uh, we can immediately see that BG1 is operated in standstill. So this is operated. This means the cylinder must be in. And also BG3 here is drawed, operated. So this means also MM2 is inwards. Uh, what we want to do? We want to do to analyze. We want to analyze this. this Prometic control and see what it's doing. Okay. What do we have? We have two cylinders, double acting cylinders. As control elements, we do have two 5 2 way valves, yeah, which apparently are in this position since we know PG1 is operated and PG3 is operated. So both are inside there. Yeah. So this means the to control valve must be in this position. This is the usual way drawing this in start position. Okay. Stand still or start position. Okay. Now, this is the situation. Yeah. And of course, there's one button. And of course, if there's a one button, this would probably be the start button. Yeah. So, let's see. At the beginning, we said MM1. This is this is a step way diagram. Yeah? So currently in before step one MM1 is down here and MM2 is also inside. Yeah? That's the initial condition. Let's see what is happening if I press in step one. Step one is pressing the button. Okay, If I press the button here, we, pressure will get here yeah. Here is pressure because this is operated, PG3 is traveled, this is operated. This means this is an end valve, so a two pressure valve. So the valve will have pressure here. Book! QM1 is switching. Here this is, this is relieved, so QM1 is switching. If QM1 is switching, we will start to travel MM1. So MM1 will travel out. This is what is happening in first step. Okay. What is happening then? Then it's happening. PG1 is no longer operated. That's the first thing which will happen. Yeah. If we start to travel at one point in time, PG1 will not be operated. This means the one-two pressure side at QM2 is pressureless yeah? because this is relieved here. Yeah? The next thing which is going to happen is that PG2 is going to be operated. So we will have add pressure, add, operate this, and we will add pressure at the 1-4 line. This we just relieved, this now we add, so QM2 is switching to the other position and MM2 is starting to travel. Yeah? So this is the second step. MM2 did nothing. Second step, after the travel of MM1, MM2 will start to travel. Okay. MM2 is starting to travel. PG3 will be released. 
he will be, will be released. If somebody is still holding this button, he will not be any pressure left. Uh -huh. Pressure is gone here. Because the two pressure valves will simply not provide the pressure anymore. PG3 is relieved. And then at some point in time, PG4, if at the end, here nothing has happened. Eh? M1, nothing has happened in second step. Now PG4 is operated, this is pressureless and this will switch back. Yeah? So in third step, after MM2 has operated PG4, this will switch and MM1 is traveling inside. Yeah? MM2, nothing will happen, will stay out. Okay, so this is switching now, this is traveling, PG2 will be relieved, so it will go back in this position. Yeah. Nothing much will happen here. Yeah. This will stay because this is an impulse valve, so this will stay at this position, so MM2 is staying. And then we will operate PG2, uh, PG1, PG1 is operated, switch back, MM2 traveling inside. MM2 traveling inside will relieve PG4. PG4 is relieved in this position. This is an impulse valve. It will stay how it is. No change on MM1. Then, P then we travel inside. PG3 is operated. PG1 is operated. Everything is as it starts. The fifth step, there is no fifth step. So it's just four steps. This is what is going to happen. So both cylinders are traveling in the coordinated way. Yeah? And each action of a cylinder is triggering the next action. And due to the connections of the valves, it is doing exactly that. Yeah? So we could imagine, for instance, this first cylinder is pushing something out of a magazine. And the second cylinder, after this has been pushed out, the second cylinder will move it to a slide and then it will go somewhere. Yeah? After the one, after it was pushed to the slide, the first cylinder is traveling in again and then also the slide pushing cylinder, second cylinder is going in again and then we are ready for the next item to be pushed out. Yeah? It would maybe be uh, possible application for this type of control. Huh? Let's see how pragmatic controls are working. Next time we do pretty much the same however we want to have a different movement pattern there. Huh? Next time we will have a movement pattern and try to develop out of this movement pattern try to develop the logic. Huh? See where we end up. So we'll be then next time. Yeah. For this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.